dear students today i want to is discuss kerosene poisoning which is more external poisoning in children what is kerosene kerosene is volatile hydrocarbon low viscosity and so greater pulmonary toxicity common seasons in summer occurs in low socioeconomic condition in family because in low socioeconomic family kerosene uses used as household fuel what is the most common cause of silul poisoning it is the kerosene poisoning kerosene poisoning is 37% of all poisoning in south african black children it is 61 to 82% of all poisoning common age of poisoning is 1 to 5 years of age so kerosene poisoning usually occurs the children age between 1 to 5 years of age and it is more common common type of poisoning in children mode of poisoning accidental poisoning fatal dose 30 ml but 0.2 ml may produce the chemical pneumonitis so it should be remembered that only 0.2 ml may produce chemical chemical pneumonitis fatal period 24 hours route of toxicity ingestion aspiration into the lung during ingestion vomiting and gastric lavage rarely inhalation so mode of toxicity are ingestion aspiration and gastric lavage gastric lavage and rarely inhalation what are the pathophysiology when the child accidentally ingests the kerosene it absorbed from the stomach and excreted by the lungs or aspiration into the lungs during ingestion vomiting or gastric lavage and producing this producing interact with the uh, in, it produces interaction with the surfactant and leads to alveolar collapse displacement of the alveolar gases by the vaporized hydrocarbon producing bronchospasm due to irritation producing chemical pneumonitis and ultimately patient develop pulmonary edema and all these factor factor increase the hypoxia which leads to encephalopathy cyanosis and of course patient develop respiratory distress so when a patient ingested the ingested the kerosene this kerosene absorbed from the stomach and excreted by the lungs and producing chemical pneumonitis or aspiration into lungs during injection injection vomiting or gastric lavage producing producing interaction with the surfactant and lead to alveolar collapse and displacement of the alveolar gases and bronchospasm chemical pneumonitis and pulmonary edema and ultimately patient level hypoxia who leads to encephalopathy and patient also suffering from respiratory distress now what are the complications of kerosene poisoning immediate complication immediate complications this secondary infection pneumothorax and subcutaneous emphysema nematocyst and empyema so most important is the pneumothorax in late complication persistent cough recurrent respiratory infection chronic lung disease causes of death in the kerosene poisoning respiratory failure ventricular arrhythmia due to myocarditis so you you are, you are, should be cautious patient may die due to ventricular arrhythmia due to myocarditis how can you diagnose the kerosene poisoning diagnosis from history physical examination and investigations from history history of accidental ingestion of kerosene smelling of kerosene from breath mouth and clothes from above history you easily consider patient suffering from kerosene poisoning symptoms patient may be asymptomatic up to 24 hours so when a patient come to you the history of ingestion of kerosene no sign symptom you should counsel the parents 
the patient may not develop symptoms after 24 hours. Symptomatic usually occur within 6 hours or may delay after 24 hours. So, you should observe the patient after 24 hours of sign symptoms. Sign symptoms due to ingestion of kerosene, excessive crying due to burning sensation of throat and mouth, nausea, vomiting, and abdominal distant abdominal pain due to irritation and diarrhea due to raised peristalsis. Science symptoms due to aspiration, the fever within hour 32, 38 to 40 degree centigrade. So, after ingestion, patient develops fever within hour 38, 38 degree to 48 degree centigrade, subsides within 24 to 48 hours. But is this fever not due to the secondary bronchopneumonia? So, no need of antibiotics. But if again fever appears after 48 hours, it indicates secondary infection and need antibiotic. So, after immediately after ingestion, if patients develop fever within 24 to 48 hours, you think the patient not suffering from secondary infection. So, you should not prescribe antibiotic. But if the fever again appear after 48 hours, indicate infection and need antibiotic therapy. And another way of presentation is the cough, respiratory distress and wheezing may develop within 30 minutes or delayed for 12 to 24 hours and progress for 24 hours and these symptoms subsides between second and third day. And some patient may present with serious manifestation due to hypoxia such as encephalopathy, lethargy, confusion, conversion and coma. And if you examine the CVS, you can find out the heart failure due to myocarditis. Now examinations. Appearance is ill-looking, symptomatic patients, dyspneic, smell of kerosene from mouth, vital signs, vital signs is stable in asymptomatic patient, but unstable is if aspiration pneumonia develops. Temperature may be raised, there may be tachypnea, tachycardia, BP may be low, low. In if patient may sometimes develop sinusitis if respiratory failure, dehydration if patient is patient give the history of vomiting. If to assess the hypoxia, you should you should do the pulse oximetry at bedside. Systemic examinations, respiratory examination, signs of aspiration pneumonia, nasal flaring, cyst indrawing, supraclavicular and intercostal recession bilateral ronchi and crepitations. So, you should, if you examine the cyst, the common findings of aspiration pneumonia, pneumonia, these are the common findings of aspiration pneumonia. And you may also get the fissures of consolidation. In that case, the breast sound is bronchial breast sound, signs of pneumothorax and signs of pural effusion. So, if you do the respiratory examination, you should think the what complication arise in lungs, uh, due to kerosene poisoning. This is aspiration pneumonia, consolidation, pneumothorax, pural effusion. You should do the severe examination for signs of myocarditis, signs of heart failure. You do the serious examination for signs of encephalopathy. Now, investigations. You should do the, usually it is clinical diagnosis. No need to investigate the child for Diagnosis is invasion done for to see the complications of the complications of the patients. Access test. You do the if you do the access test, access test usually within usually an early hours, access test is normal. Normal after 6 to 12 hours, if you do the X-ray. In that case, you may get the evidence of kerosene poisoning, such as grade 1 normal immediately after kerosene poisoning and grade 2 and grade 2, grade two mild unilateral perihilar inflammation, the mild mottling and grade 2 bilateral implantation 
and gate 3 confluent fluffy shadows on one or both sides that is patient develop pulmonary edema. Gate 4 extensive bilateral implantation with consolidation or pluralification. So, you may you get the 5 stages in kerosene poisoning. Immediately after kerosene poisoning, if you do the XA, it may be normal. If you do the XA within 6 to 12 hours, you get the mild unilateral perihilar implantation. And gate 2 bilateral implantation, a grade 3 evidence of pulmonary edema by the confluent fluffy shadows. Grade 4 extensive bilateral implantation with consolidation and or plural effusion. So, it is very important and ask in viva board if, if you uh, if a patient admitted into hospital and if you take a x ray and if you get the normal x ray after 6 to 12 hours, patient develops the develops bilateral implantation or evidence of pulmonary edema, what types of poisoning occurs? Your answer is kerosene poisoning. Treatment, now treatment, how can you treat the patients? Emergency treatment, emergency management, any poisons, you should first of all manage the patient immediately. The hospitalization of the all patients, even asymptomatic, because asymptomatic patient may develop, takes times, time, uh, that takes time to develop symptoms, takes 6 to 12 hours. So, you should admit the patients, even patient is asymptomatic. In asymptomatic patients, discharge after 24 hours, if no symptoms of or normal chest x-ray. In symptomatic cases, rapid assessment of vitals, resuscitation by the ABC care if needed and after stabilization, you, you do counseling the parents and children, prevention of further absorption such as removal of contaminated clothes, wash the skin, no emesis or gastric cleavage because if you do the gastric cleavage and you do the in, in, in uh, if you uh, do the emesis, patient aspirate the kerosene and producing aspiration pneumonia. And specific treatment, no specific treatment, only supportive. And supportive treatments are using nutritional, the oral, and the tube or IV depends on condition of the patients. Fever treated with the paracetamol. If patient present with aspirate distress, evaluation of the ventilator status. Oxygen inhalation to all patients. All patients, if respiratory failure, mechanical ventilation, no antibiotic, no steroids. So you should, you should careful the about the antibiotic and no steroid. You should know, you should not prescribe the antibiotic if patients not develop secondary bronchopneumonia, and you should not prescribe steroid because steroid is harmful in kerosene poisoning. Treatment of complications treat accordingly, such as antibiotic therapy in secondary pneumonia. If you suspect if the fever appears and reappears of fever on the third day or fifth day of, in, of injection by the injection ampicillin and injection metronidazole, and control of convulsion and control of convulsion by, uh, by the anticonvulsion drug, and you should the, treat the pneumothorax and also the treat the encephalopathy. Follow up, clinical follow up observe at least 24 hours to see the respiratory and CNS complications and also follow up the vitals and respiratory distress and fever and complications, pulse oximetry and also you should the left follow up by the complete blood count and excess test. Prognosis depends on amount of ingestion. Mortality of the children fully recovered within 3 to 8 days. Death may occur due to respiratory failure and also you should prevent the kerosene poisoning by storage of kerosene in a designated container above a ground level. Adult supervision of the children, keep out of risk from children, avoid kerosene poisoning, avoid kerosene if poisoning, if possible. So, they are, these are the, uh, these are the signs, symptoms, treatment and complications and prognosis prevention of kerosene poisoning. 
and you should you should remember no emesis at gastric level is done in calcium poisoning because it producing it producing aspiration pneumonia and you remember that signs symptom of calcium poisoning usually not present within 6 hours so if any patients give the history of calcium poisoning with any amount you should admit the patients for observation at least for 24 hours uh, if there is no sign symptoms and x-ray says normal after 24 hours you should discharge the, you may discharge the patients from the hospital thank you students now i want to discuss about the organophosphorus compound poisoning